Hi there guys, Darren Seamson back with another video and today, who are we with today? Are you with Jay McGee, who snuck in at the 8th place. Yeah. <laughs> so you said what you did today, uh, what did you play today? I played salad again, I think it's good for a regional, it's good against Rogue and there's going to be a lot of that at this regional. You really yeah. need to play for your regional, that's how it's good for it. But I understand that you lost round 1 again, huh? Yeah, so I've got this problem where I just lose round 1, I'm honestly going to have an hour's <laughs> sleep next time because there's no point. I actually lost round 1 because I misplayed, like, uh, it was my own fault. So. Oh, well let's check out Salomon Great 2.0 then. Right, so basically, the deck, giving him a nose a scratch. <laughs> there we go. The problem with the deck was, if you looked at last profile, it was like super poly and oh, some other cards in there, right? But basically, that let me get OTK far too often. So I went, I went to Glasgow Region, I just got battered out, like, Cyber Dragon, you told me you doubled everything. So mm -hmm. I was like, I need to play a card that stop me getting OTK'd. And the game is yeah. third turn. So <laughs> I played free and perm. That's new, and this is like also the absolute best hand trap ever because I played dangers and you can set it, and it's just so good. And you can use it in your turn, everything's great. Play free ghost ogre now. This is really good against right. striker to hit multi roll, which is prevalent. It's good against um, pendulum, and there's quite a few people there who were playing pendulum, and I just don't want to lose the pendulum. What do you hit against pendulum like servant? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Okay, sometimes I do hit the servant if I've got another hand trap and I don't want to, you know, because I'm going to get jack o' lantern. It depends, yeah. but if you usually hit this on Electromite and then the pass, and then the the Orcus deck, because if they go engage and then they go into the, the token and then they get Kagari and they get engaged back, at that point they'll search the Widow Anchor and then they'll normal summon the Harp, they'll link it with the Kagari for a Galatea, they'll use the Harp to to banish to get Nightmare and then it's only at that point because what they want to do is make the Dingrisu and then link it off into IP. At that point they'll use the Galatea to return the Harp. If you Ghost Dog it there, the, and they don't have another extender, they end on a nightmare in the main monster zone and then a dead widow anchor or whatever they've added off engage. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty good. And it also destroys a monster which stops me getting OTK'd, which is the whole point of it. Uh, free Ash, standard. Um, it is only the nine hand traps in here, but normally- oh, Just the nine. That's it, no. Yeah. <laughs> no Phantasma again, uh, in the main, in the main. Uh, it's rubbish anyway. Uh, no Buffalo in the main either, because that's bad. Oh, really? We've been through this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Check out his other profile. And uh, no foul either. Because <gasps> I feel like the foul with the free gazelle and with the free circle was insane because you had like you could either draw into the gazelle and then you, or you could draw into combo and have the sign of man and have a have a circle and then that was very easy into the foul. But unless you're me, you don't often draw sign at mine in a circle or like full <laughs> combo and circle. Anyway, um Free Foxy again, free Spinny again, standard stuff. Two Jaguar. Um, strike is prevalent, so obviously you need to play it. And obviously the Orcus deck's now a, a play in the Shark Hand in him, so it's just more reason to play Jaguar. Yeah. If you don't have a Jaguar, you just lose. So. Yeah. Uh, one Falco, again, no, um, no foul. And one Gazelle, and that's the main solid monsters there. Then play the one card starter that some people seem to be dropping, debug. Um, better than Buffalo. You've got to be careful with the amount of normal summons you play in a deck. So if you open like, if you open Buffalo Foxy, you're in that situation where you're like, do I, do I take Magic Beans? Magic Beans. And do I just get two and see what you can get? Because then that's two cards. Or do you go Foxy and then you see three cards, but you might get them all. And I, I don't like making that decision. So I'd rather yeah. just go. And then if you've got, if you've got Foxy in this and that's four normal summons, and then you've just drew a one of and a three of together, which you're not like, what are the chances? It mm. doesn't come up very often. And then two Sea Archiver. Um, two Sukunoko. Still the dangers, yeah? Two Jack Lop. Yeah, the dangers are really good because. I play Appaloosa now because I cut Super Poly. So okay. it's really easy to get into. It's really easy just to have another danger on the board and then end with an Appaloosa for four. But when you when you're playing like when you're playing the dangers, just literally every single card is is full combo. Like all of them are full combo. With the well, when I say full combo, I mean it gets you into Mirage Stallion. But all of these yeah. plus any danger, and it just does so much for the consistency of the deck. And even you know any of these together, two dangers together, yeah. you don't really want to see that. And obviously you don't want to discard your your Gorga and your Ash with with the Jack uh, the dangers, but. If it comes up, it comes up. You probably, if you're discarding stuff to something like you could normal first, I guess. Dangerous. Yeah, you could normal the hand trap, or you could normal the, uh, the danger. Uh, free will, because of I'll show you how to make up a loser with it at the end. People have been cutting will. Or what do you think um, about that? It's it's really good because you can it gets you out of so many sticky situations. Like will let me play through so many awful situations. And the new the Orcus deck with strikers in it has so many interruptions. You need it to go through, and if you've got a will face up, they have to out it. Otherwise, you just keep playing through it. So yeah. Really good. 
uh, free call by, the amount of times people went skeleton targeting and I call by the Dingrisu. And then they can't do it that turn, they can't do it the next turn, and then you just start to like mount your comeback on them. Mm -hmm. and call by is pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, though. it's insane. Obviously it hits hand traps as well, which is really good. Yeah. It does conflict with the dangers, that does come up, but I feel like <sighs> sometimes you just need to do it. Um, free mining, obviously standard, and the circle, just getting you into stuff. Um, one engine requirement. And then this is still better than upstart. I still need to cut some card hooks out, but I'm not going to do it. Um, and then one of each of the traps. And if you draw one, it's difficult because I really do want to play more traps because I do want to see them. Because if you get one trap and you get into the other trap, then it's yeah. fine. But it's like, I don't play desires either. Yeah, I was just and, about to ask him. Um, yeah, you still not a fan of desires? No, I'm still not a fan of desires because you've got to play so much more stuff for desires. Like I would have to play another rage and another raw, which mm. basically means I'd have to cut some stuff out of here, which would either be a hand trap, which means I lose if I don't can't play through a board, yeah. or a call by and stuff. And uh, just. I don't like desires because it's too many bricks. I do like to see more traps, but they're not very good. Like your best opening hands is when you have a playable hand with a trap, so that means yeah. you end on both traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, imagine opening like two raw and nothing. Yeah. But I suppose, I suppose call by can be classed as a trap. Yeah, it is. And obviously, all your traps going, all your traps going second. Oh, uh, your hand traps going second or insane, and obviously the imperms as well. Yeah. But um, it's just good as well because if you get danger and you can end with that on the field, sometimes you can get a free draw, and you do see monster heavy hands with like. Spinny and Foxy and whatnot, and you, you yeah. don't need all those cards. And obviously, the best thing is ditching an archive off for danger. Yeah, like if you, that, if you discard one of your monsters and replace it with a defensive card, that's like yeah, perfect scenario. Perfect, yeah, perfect. <coughs> and then the extra deck. This is a like this has changed a lot. So the standard, that, that, and I still think two Stalio is correct. If people yeah. always in the well, not always, but most people in the B route on the summon of the Stalio. If you watch my last profile, I say you can, you can sometimes if you've got a will and a danger, you can make another Stalio and make a decent board. Mm. You can't play through the B no one's pretending that you can't. Um, Dweller, obviously correct this time. <laughs> uh, Heater, because if the Ash I actually did a decent play against this guy where he ashed me, I still managed to bring back his Ash and, and like then respond to Archiver when the Ash hit the zone and then you can get in your combo that way. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix, because you don't play like it's bad. Um, <laughs> I played Avamax over Borrelord. Cut this at the last second. Never summon Borrelord. Never summon this. Um, this was just theoretically a little bit better because it's better against Striker. I found that Salah Maguire always had a random 15 spot that yeah. could be anything in a really niche situation that just never comes up. It's If you play the Super Poly, it's, it's whether you want to play this one or the, the second Stalio over the least four. Yeah. But like, you're going you're gonna to make the second Stalio significantly more times than you're going to make this. Yeah. This was just in there for the rogue person who makes the BLS link or something. <laughs> sure. um, up loser, this is really good. Um, if you do the standard combo, and you'll like not standard combo, you've got you've got one pretty good, and you can you can search the will, but the idea is that you have the you have the the wolf up here that you've relinked. You've brought back the jaguar underneath here. You link that jaguar off for of this. You've got your stally over here, and then you'll have a jaguar in the grave plus another card, and then you contribute will off to summon the Jaguar and whatever else it is. And then you've got an Appaloosa for four. And then if you've got like this under, if you've got a trap as well, then that's insane. I, I don't do that often. The only time I did do it was against Arcus and the Imperm dip, but we don't talk about it. Um, I mean, you've got those flex spots in the extra deck. Yeah, you do. And, and sometimes as well, if you can't, if your gazelle gets ashed, I did it when my gazelle got ashed, so I couldn't send anything in the grave, and that meant my wolf didn't add anything back. Mm. So I just burned the will to make the Appaloosa, and then wolf added back the will, so it was completely free. You might as well just play it. And yeah. as well, this, when you go first against Orcus, you can make Dweller, and then if they can out the Dweller, you have nothing else. You almost want another Dweller. But if you can, if you have that field, you can go, um, really, you can go Stalio, and you don't have to use the Appaloosa this turn. Mm -hmm. You can just make the Appaloosa for four at the end of all your players with your trap and then they've got a graveyard full of effects that you're just going to negate. So. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty solid. And as well... Helps and grinds as well. Um, no, it's really shocking as well. If, you, if you're going turn two and then they've got Nibiru or whatever and you're going wild and you just make this 
and you haven't used Thalio, then they can't be reviewed. Yeah. And that's obviously a thing. That was pretty solid. Yeah. Never came up. <laughs> this is where their side deck gets a little, a little interesting. So, you see, on my hand trap type trade, uh, this is the weird part of the side deck, I'll just show it all at once. Um, two lands here. This was like the card that I wanted to play the third one of, but literally didn't know what to cook. So I was like, I have to play free evenly because you got to play for your regional. There's going to be people playing Guru or something like that. <laughs> you, you need. You need the uh, third evenly against that. These Phantasma is, I don't like them, but if you go in second and you can play it, and it, get, it can get you into another hand trap. But then the idea is, why would you just cut these for another? Yeah. But then, this helps you play through the IP board if you do this on their IP. It can shuffle back anything, obviously, in the sanctuary if you draw that or whatever. Yeah. And this is really good against Striker. I, I don't know. I really. Not sure whether that them two Phantasmas should be a third pro and a third Lancia. Yeah. Or that. I don't know. Just, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to I fell out of love with uh, Phantasmia lately. I would rather it be a high impact hand trap instead of. I, I played it today, but it was not very great, good for me. It's it's just like if you you want Phantasmia to, to stop them, but it doesn't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it just doesn't. It's sort of only there to make your hand better, which it, it is good to make your hand better into like to better your game state than reduce size. But three in a room, just because I lose every single mirror I ever play, so I drag it. Uh, yep. She's a win. Um, two secret twin twisters and one ultimate. <laughs> this one you don't, have, you don't have to discard unless you obviously want to. Unless you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> and then, um, free of me. Just because you need to, you need it to be Martindale basically. <laughs> no, yeah, he was fuming because I, I lost game one, and then I knew he plays a demise while he build. It's a really good build. He just didn't top of it today because I opened these against him. Game two. <laughs> and then as well, obviously, I drew the second twin twister in case he could have a chance back. But yeah, that's that's it. That's the. Latest. And that's the try not to get OTK to make it to your second turn. Because if you make it to the second turn, spinning back or you can out most fields with either um, Stally or Helio. The deck's not great, right? But it's, it's good enough when everyone else is bad. <laughs> Any shout outs? Um, shout out Carl for teaching me the mirror. Danny, because we stayed at his last night. Antonio for the call. All the boys at Locus really is good crap. <laughs> well, give him a shout out. Yeah. Sick. Good stuff. Cheers, Jake. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys later. See ya.